Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a car in Autodesk Fusion 360. So if you haven't already watched the first video, I highly recommend that you do. It contains the essentials that you need in order to proceed with this one. It shows how to look for blueprints, which ones to select, how to crop it, and then how to import it so that you can use it as a base to create these 3D models. Now, I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been supporting this channel. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps growing the channel. You can also um, subscribe to my Patreon. We've got our first community meeting coming up on Zoom this month. You can make a one-time donation on PayPal, or you could also give a super thanks right here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. Now, in the previous video, we left off over here. So we imported the side view, we imported the top view, we imported the front view, and we set it up in a way that is ready to go. Now, in this video, we're going to be making only one surface. But once you understand how to make this one surface, you can basically go ahead and try and make the rest of the car yourself. Don't worry, I'll still be making the step-by-step -step video tutorial till the end. But if you want to save time and make it, try and making it yourself, you absolutely can. So in this video, we're going to be making this surface right here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to actually go to Google, type in the name of the car that you're making and look for some reference images. I've got one right here. It's a beautiful black colored Mercedes. And the surface that we're going to be making is right here. So if you just follow where my mouse is, we're going to be starting from here. We're going to go all the way, follow that curve that you can see. We're going to stop there. We're going to go there, follow that same curve on the other side, and then we're going to close that surface off by following that curve over there. So how does this look like in our planes? So let's go back to Fusion. Let's go to the top view. And here it is. So now if you follow my mouse again, that's the surface that we're going to be looking at. So that curve over there, that curve over there, that curve over there, and that curve over there. Now, obviously, this is a closed surface. So once we make these um, lines in 3D space, we can just go ahead and use some surface workspace tools to patch the surface up and create a single solid surface. Now, there are two ways we can go about doing this. And the way that I'm going to show you is personally a little bit better than um, the method that I used to use before. And this is because if you cl look closely, if you look at it from a manufacturing perspective, what would have potentially happened is that, now follow my mouse again, this would have been a single surface, right? Not just till this curve over here, but actually even that curve. And then this would have been pressed against a mold to create the curvature that we see right now. Now, the two ways I was talking about, one is you could go and stop over there and create that surface, or you could actually continue going all the way to the down there, and then follow that path and stop it, and then we split the surface. So I'm actually gonna go with the latter one. And this is because if you try to create these as two different surfaces, it's gonna cause a little bit of a continuity error, and it won't really look too different when you zoom out, but if you go into the details, you'll see a little bit of a difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this as a single surface, and we're gonna go ahead from there. Now, if that didn't make much sense, don't worry. I'm going to show you what to do now. So let's go back to Fusion. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sketch from the top plane. Okay. And the first thing I want to do is I want to check that this is in 3D sketch. So I'm going to tick that. I'm going to right click on the cube, make sure it's orthographic. And now we can go ahead and start sketching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this fit point spline tool right over here. I'm going to hover over um, the origin here. I'm going to go up a little bit because that's where we want to start it. Okay. And I'm just going to go all the way up. You'll see that it's being able, it's, it's able to snap to the symmetry line right there. So make sure it's snapped to that. And we're just going to go ahead and end over there. Right. Now you may be asking, well, we just created a single straight line. Why didn't we just use the straight line instead of using the spline? Well, this is because you can see over here, it's come up with something that we call the tangent control, right? A straight line would not have this. Whereas if we made a straight line with a spline, 
you would have these tangent controls. And these tangent controls are really, really important when creating these complex surfaces. So if you want to play around with it, what you can do is you can actually click on one of these green dots, press M on your keyboard to move, and try playing around with them. You'll see how the curvature of that straight line has changed, right? So if you don't know what a tangent is, it's basically just a straight line that touches the main curve at one single point, and it's perpendicular to that line. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I click on this and I move this around a little bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and press OK for now. And you'll see that this line over here is the main curve. If I click on it, that thing that has just turned up is the tangent. And you can see there's only one single point where that tangent touches this curve, and it's at that point right there. So as I change how the tangent moves, the curvature um, of the curve changes as well. Okay, obviously this is not needed right now, so I'm just gonna undo this and we're going back to a straight line. Now, what do we actually do with this? So from the top view, this looks absolutely perfect. However, if I go to the side view, you'll see that the line is right here. Whereas the line we actually want it to be should be from here to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on that line we just created, press M on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna drag this up to somewhere over there. Okay, so that white dot over there, that's where the line should be. I'm gonna go ahead and press OK. And now I'm gonna take the back white dot over here, press M on my keyboard, and now that's where our dot should be. So now I'm gonna just do something like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and press OK. So now what has happened is that we have our front point fixed and we've also got our back point fixed. Obviously, this is still a straight line. We need to turn this into a curved line and we want it to follow the curve of that car over there. So what we can do is we can click on the main line and you'll see that the tangent has appeared again from the side view. The reason why you can't see those um, green dots yet is because we created this line from the top view instead of the side view. But this is a simple fix. All we need to do is click on that green line, right click on the green line and click on activate tangent handle. And what that does is it will present us with the controls to manipulate it. So let's go ahead and try, our, try to click on that dot over there, press M on our keyboard, and actually move that dot. Now you'll see how the curve changes. And what our aim is to try and match that curve with the blueprint line. Okay, and now I can go ahead and press OK. If that didn't work for you, chances are what happened was you clicked on the main line and you pressed M. If you click on the main line and pressed M, what's gonna happen is that that fixed point we were talking about earlier changes. That's not what we want to change. We want to change the tangent handle. See the difference? So currently we're manipulating the tangent, whereas here we're changing the fixed point. And if you click on the tangent itself, you're still only changing the fixed point. Whereas what we want to change is that point that is on the tangent. All right, if that didn't make sense, just play around with it, see what changes are made, and then you'll understand it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna undo that. Again, just M on our keyboard, and now I'm gonna do it properly. So we want it to match somewhere there. Okay, and now I'm gonna press Enter, and I'm gonna repeat the same thing on our second point. So I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna click on the green tangent, right click, and activate tangent handle. I'm gonna click on the dot over there, press M on my keyboard, and just manipulate that. And go ahead and press okay. So now we have this working from the side surface. Let's see how this looks from the front. Okay, it still looks pretty good. Let's look at it from the top. It still looks pretty good. And just making sure, look at it from the side, and it still looks pretty good. Great, so now let's make the rest of the three curves that we need for the surface. Let's go back to the top view. Let's click on fit point spline again. And now, if you notice, if you try and snap your cursor to that white dot we created earlier, it's not going to let you. And this is because we created this, uh, we created this um, using the top plane, but that top plane lies at the bottom of the origin. 
or if you remember correctly, what we did was we moved that line up. So no, it no longer identifies that as the same plane. So now what, what we can do is we can just orbit a little bit, right? So just press home on our keyboard, orbit a little bit. And now if you try and snap that to the white dot now, because it's in 3D sketch, it's going to snap right to it. And now you can do whatever we want. So once you snap to it, let's go back to the top view. And now we need to follow this line. So this line right here. So I'm going to end it somewhere over there. Okay. And press enter. Again, because we created this on the top view and we're still on the top view, we can actually see the tangent controls. So go ahead and click on that green line over there. Press M on our keyboard and just drag this down a little bit. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So press enter, click on this, click on the green, press M and use the tangent to try and fit that line there. Now, this isn't the only specific way of managing your curve. There might be another way you can do it. So maybe you want to extend this one over here and reduce that one over there. That would also work. So just be patient, play around with it and see what works for you. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Again, from the top view, it looks perfect. Let's look at it from the bottom view. And you can see from the bottom view, it's still a straight line. And you can see that it's flying at the same level. We don't want that. We want this to be somewhere over here. So I'm going to press M on my keyboard and I'm actually going to move the main point down a little bit. All right. And now that we've done that, we can now go ahead and do the same for the tangent. Just like that. OK, so from the front view, it looks good. From the top view, it looks good. Now we need to also check if it looks good from the side view. And I think it does. Right. Um, let's see if we can change that bit a little bit over there. So you can see that that tangent there is really small. And that's because from the side view, that tangent is quite small. So let's just press M on our keyboard and drag this a little bit to see what happens. OK, it looks pretty similar to me still, uh, and that's OK. I think it fits the blueprints well. Cool. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create our third curve for the surface. Again, if you try and snap this from the top view again, it's not going to work. So just orbit a little bit and then try and snap it. It's going to work. Then go back to the top view and now you're back. Now we're going to go ahead and stop it somewhere here. So I'm going to follow that curve and try and imagine, try to imagine the extended version of that curve. So just go all the way there and stop it there. Brilliant. Press OK or enter on your keyboard. And now we need to manipulate the tangent again. Um, before we do that, Let's go to the front view and actually set the height for this. So click on that white dot, press M on our keyboard and just drag it down to where it's meant to be. OK, so somewhere there would be fine. Press OK. And now let's manipulate the tangents. So just click on this, click on that green dot there. Again, if the green dot is not showing up, make sure you click on the surface, click on the green, uh, sorry, click on the curve click on the green line, right click and press activate tangent control. All right, mine's already activated. So I'm going to press M and I'm just going to drag this to the side. Now, one quick note while dealing with these tangents is to be really gentle with the way we play with them. We don't want to be making too many changes um, in all the planes. Otherwise, it's going to start looking a little bit strange. OK, so I'm just going to shift this very little there and that looks good. I'm going to press OK. So again, from the top view, it looks good. Now let's see from the front view. So obviously from the front view, it's not looking too good yet. Let's see how it looks like from the side. It also doesn't look too good from the side. So what we'll do is we'll try and match this from the side view first. So now I just want to press M on my keyboard on the activate tangent control and just push this up a little bit to try and follow that curve and do the same for this one over here. And there you go. All right. Again, if you feel like your tangents are not moving, but your fixed point is moving, make sure you're only selecting that green dot at the end of each of the tangents. All right. So now from the side, it looks good. 
from the front it looks a little bit off but we can take care of that and from the top it looks good so now from the front view let's actually try and change a bit of that so press m on our keyboard and just pull it in a little bit okay and now let's go back to top view and see if it still works and it does that's good that's looking good and from the side view it also looks good so again this is why i said be patient and try and see what works for you try and match it on one side first or from one view then try and match the same curve in the second view and see if it automatically makes sense in the third if it doesn't try to tweak a few things from each of the views till everything fits so so far it looks good let's go back to the front view and now all we need to do is match this and this so let's go back to the top view because that's where we initially started our sketch and we want to be super consistent fit point spline again it's not going to let us touch any of these yet so just orbit a little bit snap to that point and we know we're supposed to return to this point so just snap back to that point go back to the top view and press enter i'm going to click on that tangent control there press m and just like that and then over here as well and press ok so from the top view it looks good from the front view it still doesn't look quite good so let's turn this to something like that and now you'll see that there is a bit of a problem and the problem is that there's an abrupt change over here so if I just undo this, you'll see that if you watch the blueprints closely, there's a straight line which is relatively smooth, relatively smooth, relatively smooth, and about here, there's an abrupt change and it starts like decreasing in gradient over there. So let's go back to the reference and see what actually happens. You'll see that it's smooth, 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 smooth. And also from there, it's smooth. And it stops right there. So it stops just before that surface becomes abruptly different. So let's actually do the same for our thing. So let's move that fixed point, press M on our keyboard, and just move it a little bit to the side over there, just above where that thing becomes abrupt. Okay, and now we can go ahead and actually change this just slightly a little bit like that. And that way we're still ensuring that it looks consistent with the blueprint and it's smooth, all right? So now go ahead and press OK. And now if you just roll around in 3D space, you can see that we have one, two, three, four lines, and this would have become a complete surface. So let's go ahead and finish our sketch. Go to the surface workspace, click on patch, and click on one, two, three, four, and you'll see it's automatically created this beautiful 3D curve with this complex curvature. Go ahead and press OK. Cool, so let's have a look at it from the front. How does it look? It looks pretty good to me. Go to the top view and it looks pretty good. And also from the side view, it looks pretty good. Now, if you notice correct, if you notice a little bit, you'll see that there's a bit of uh, a change here. And what we can do is we can actually go back in time and edit that. So let's go and click on that. Um, sketch over there that we created. Just double click on it, it'll take you back in time. Go ahead and click on this and we can make a few changes. And that's the power of Fusion 360, right? You have the timeline feature. So once you're happy with the change, press finish sketch again and this new surface that we created will automatically adapt to the changes that we made. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next one, we're actually gonna be making this surface over here. And the reason why I want this to be its own video is because I'm gonna be showing you another way of creating the same surface. Currently, we just focused on that one surface over there, right? But in this case, in the next one, we're gonna be focusing not only on this surface, but we're also gonna be focusing on this surface. And you can see, if you, would think about, if you thought about it, you can create this surface as one over here, then another over here, and another over here. But instead of creating three different surfaces, what we can do to ensure continu continuity, we can create one big surface from here to here, and then split it down the middle later on. That's why I need to spend a little bit more time so that I can articulate it better to actually show you how to do that. And it's gonna be one video, but a lot of surfaces being completed at the same time. 
So now that you know how to create a basic surface that is complex in Fusion 360, what I want you to do is try and make some of the surfaces yourself as well and see how you do over there. So that's it for this video. Now, please, please, please make sure that you are patient and you understand how different things are being done, especially the things to do with the curves and the tangent controls. Try it out, have some fun with it, see what works for you, make a lot of mistakes, but learn from these mistakes. If things didn't make too much sense, don't worry. The more surfaces you create in the next few videos, the better it will become for you. And the more models you make, the better understanding you'll have as to how to make these models in general. So that's it for this video. Uh, please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Please consider subscribing to my Patreon. We're going to be having our first community meeting this month. And uh, you can leave a one-time donation or give me a super thanks on YouTube itself. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I hope to see you in the next video next week. Take care.